Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you my Jund build. And if you want to see the booster packs opened, you can go see the previous video. It's all It all came from the same pre-release kit, so don't think that it's like multiple kits. It's one kit, and it's very, very good. So I'm going to explain why I have these cards and why I chose Jund. Most of the bombs we had in removal were, are in Jund. I believe you can go two colors, but I don't think you can do mono color in this particular uh, pre-release unless you really get like over half your cards in one color, which is not likely since you don't get any help. Remember, you don't get a you know a preset uh, color amount of cards in one color anymore, or a combination of colors. This card is very good. When you look at a card like this, you look at the fact it is removal. Removal is always at a premium, and it is repeat removal. Repeat removal is the best type of removal in my opinion. Yes, it does require a sacrifice, but when it produces, and you can produce quite a bit of these, not really as big of an issue. Now, this card is very good. I would definitely play more of them. It comes in as a free free, it comes in as six power, but half the power comes in as one one tokens that can sacrifice themselves. I card's very good. I looked at this card. This is one of the foils we pulled. Uh, it is an uncommon. Very, very good. Six mana, and you can get a 9-9. Nine, nine. Like, yeah, but how tough is it? So I tried to make sure my ingest creatures were, could get to the point where if I'm going to play this card, he, it's always a 9-9. Nine, nine. And for the most part, he will be. So very good. Ogamog's Despoiler. Despoil? Despoil. Or, okay. Um, Territorial Bayoff. This card is a nice filler card. Four power seems to be able to take on mo most Adrazis. I like the fact that you can go up to six power and definitely hold his own. Very, very useful card. Obviously, it can really only go up on six power on your turn because maybe, I think there's no fetch lands minus the Expeditions. But there's also that one that can... What is that one that's been reprinted every time? Just leave a comment below. I forget, uh, What is that one comment that's in like every single set that can look for land? Anyway, this card is my only ally I'm playing. Uh, I like it a ton. It is really... It's When you're playing longer games, and I do imagine these games will be, tend to be longer, you want to find cards like this with repeatable abilities that you can keep going and going and going and then you can put your uh, mana into it and not really waste efficiency. Now, Grave Birthing is very, very nice. Uh, it turns on, it's kind of ingest. You get to draw a card and you get a 1-1 one, one, and you get to ingest. I don't, it, it does everything that you want to do. Call of the Scion, again, very, very good. It produces tokens. Tokens are kind of relevant for this deck because you're going to have to sacrifice them to kill other creatures. Now, let me talk about this card. This card is kind of a late game card and it's not necessarily very good early game because you need to ingest something, right? But it's a two for one every single time. Like it just nails a creature down and it presents a pretty sizable uh, amount of damage. Undergrowth Champion, this card is, it's a real deal. Like, I don't know how else to say it. It is a real deal. It probably will be played in standard and it's gonna be very strong and limited. Like, there's very little ways to, I'll show you how to deal with it. Like, obviously you can do this card, Wasteland Strangler, which would deal with it quite nicely. You can use your Brood Butcher, that would deal with it. I mean, but other than that, like other than like them actually having those cards that are exist only in this deck, kind of very difficult to deal with. Um, it only gets bigger and bigger every turn. It gets bigger in standard. Do I see this card being played? I do, just because of how powerful he will be with fetch lands. Um, and talking about repeat abilities, one of my favorite cards. I value this card extremely high, probably much higher than most people would value this card. It is Valakut Invoker. Two and a red, Human Shaman, eight. It deals free damage to target creature or player. So it's a continuous lightning bolt. Love the card, I just love it so much. I mean, I can see games going long, especially with this type of Jun build, 
uh, where you're trying to get, you know, you're trying two for one, three for one, and this card just presents such a beating. And it's not just in, it's not just a creature or player. I first misread it as only creatures. It's also a player, so it's essentially a lightning bolt to the face. And talking about lightning bolts, we actually do have a the lightning bolt of this particular set. Tusk of the Void. Whenever I see removal, uh, removal as in burn removal, I, I always play it. I know sometimes it's not the best case. So I also have Rolling Thunder. That's the only other card I might include. I don't know what I would cut for that card. And I'll show you the other card. You can watch the other video or I'll just quickly show you other relevant cards in a pile. But this card is very, very good. And I think it's better than Rolling Thunder for this particular deck. Although Rolling Thunder is an absolute beating. Don't take anything away from that. This card, my favorite card, it is aggro. It is lots of damage. It reminds me of a great merchant that doesn't require other cards to help it. That comes down instead of turn like five or six or seven. It comes down as early as you want it. And it just bashes in. It has ingest. It's going to turn on your other mechanics in this particular deck. It is honestly one of the best cards and it does two damage. So you can view this as a mini sea rhino for this particular deck, I, and especially in limited. In limited, it has a good body size. It has ingestibility, which is going to help. And it does two damage uh, or each opponent loses two life. So it's kind of like a mini rhino. Now let's talk about this card. This card is an absolute bomb. Uh, when you have removal, a lot of times removal is just removal and it's premier removal. This is premier removal on a bomb. So remove their best creature, you get a 4-4 creature, your turn. If they have no response for this, they automatically lose. This is one of the cards that I would be most scared to face against because it is very difficult to beat. Um, it swings the tempo. If you want the definition of a 2-for-1, this is the definition of a two for one. You get rid of their best creature, or let's say that they have a planeswalker somehow. You get rid of their best card in their side, and you produce a sizable four four. Seems very good for me. Seems like a huge tempo swing. And talking about kind of uh, other removals available in black. Black is very good. I think I would always play black. I don't know if I would always play red or green, but I'm always going to play black. Black just seems so good. And this is another common. So Dominator Drone is one of the comments I love. Grave Birthing is another comment I love. Uh, Wasteland Strangler obviously is a rare, so you might not see it, but it's also very good. Uh, the Sharpshooter, is this a Sharpshooter? Yeah, Sharpshooter is also very good. But... Um, Removes the creature, exactly what you want to do. You want to go to long game because you have all these mana sinks that you're going to just beat them down with. This card, I only got one of them, but I would play more. I don't know what I would cut if I had to play this card, but so good. 2-2 two, two with ingest that can turn on this card, the strangler on turn three. So that's pretty good. I mean, you're getting a tremendous amount of value. Uh, transgress the mind, that's pretty much a uh, card discard. Target player reveals his or her hand. You may choose a card from it or convert a mana cost free or greater and exile that card. Obviously, that's pretty much to knock out bombs. Uh, people's bombs are going to be better than yours. I don't know how much better though because you have this one. You have two ruinous paths. So even if they play a bomb, you can just remove it, be it a planeswalker or just a really good creature. And even if they play an undergrowth champion or something like anything fast, you can remove it. If they play anything really big, you can remove it. I don't know. I think it's a very, very good Jund deck. Spawning, spawning bed, love it. Um, I think it's going to be, I think this is definitely playable in my opinion because you want those tokens. A lot of times you're just sitting on land and there's very little you can do. So why not destroy this piece of land to get a ton of tokens? So that's my Jund deck. I think it would do extremely well at pre-release. And I love black. I think black is the best color in my opinion, mainly because it has a lot of great removal. Red also has tremendous amounts of burn removal. So this card is very good. I like this card. I'll just show you the other cards we pulled so you can leave a comment. What type of deck would you make? Would you make an ally deck? I will put notable cards. Anticipate really not awesome in this format. Really going to be a play in standard, I believe, but not in this particular format. 
not in limited. Ultra's Reap, I did consider putting that in, but it's a little meh to me. This card's not bad. It comes in as a 4 free. It has Rally. It can give people first strike. Oh, it gives people trample even better in some cases. Uh, Menace, this card. Red has a lot of interesting size creatures, which might just be big enough to cause you trouble. Uh, this is very interesting. Uh, it is a aggro version of tokens. So if you want to play tokens in limited, this would be playable. Uh, I will tell you about like other cards that if I had more of them, I might consider playing. I didn't consider playing this card. This card is, in my opinion, far worse than Dominator. Uh, the Dominator, I know, is in the two and a black slot, and that's very, very busy in this particular deck, but I still wouldn't think that this card is an upgrade. I would actually much rather have the Dominator over this card, even if they were the same amount. The Dominator just reminds me so much of Rhino, but like a really cheaper version of Rhino. So you do get a lot of duplicates. I don't know if that's by chance or what is that? There's not that many one drops, but that's a one drop right there. I think there's a two one one drop that we didn't get. I, there's a one one flyer. This card is not bad. I like that card quite a bit. And Breaker of Armies, I could side that in. It seems kind of good against some decks. This particular ally goblin, which makes gives itself and all your creatures coming in that are allies, haste, seems very good. Adverse conditions, uh, tap up to tar two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during their controllers uh, next untap. Step, put a 1-1 one, one colorless Adrazi Scion creature. Uh, playable, I guess. Rune Protector, Scrying, we don't really need to look for any particular land, we're not Modern Tron. And Lumber Falls, I guess we could play it, I like it a lot, the Hexproof is very good for this type of... This is one card I do want to talk about, if you do get multiples of this card, play it, this is one of the best cards in the format. This is absolutely, it's, te it's not removal in a bomb, it's kind of like a temple in a creature. So it's less, it's not Ruinous Path, which is... The ideal card you could be pulling but it's still pretty good these cards i like a lot too love this card uh, herald of kotalak he makes everything cheaper he's got a good body and he can uh he can block all day until it's time and rolling thunder is another very powerful piece of removal just not maybe not the correct piece for my particular deck so what type of deck would you make what do you guys think about my jun build do you feel like um you would change any of the cards uh, if you want to see the packs being opened, you can see the previous, previous video. Bye, guys.